Hey, 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 moms. It's your girl, Sharita, the behavior and literacy strategist. Coming at you from the Morgan Unlimited Growth Institute, where you can find solutions for both of your child's behavior and literacy challenges. Y'all, I was so hurt. I just watched this video. I posted it on my page. And the, the link is attached here. Hey, D, what's up? Um... Watching this video, I got so upset, and I went and talked to my husband, my rock, my king, Kev, the one I could be most vulnerable to. And I'm usually not vulnerable here. <laughs> so I did have to get myself together first before I, before I came on here because, you know, uh, I'm a Leo. So we, we do most of that stuff in private. But unless we have somebody we feel like we can really, really trust, okay? So... Um, I tried to write down what I wanted to say. Hey, Drina. Hey, girl. Welcome. Welcome. I tried to write down what I wanted to say, but I couldn't write it down. I couldn't put it into words. So I said, let me just get on here and just talk. Just let y'all know how I'm feeling about this. Uh, if you watch the video and the link is attached, a mom is in the school um, and she is very upset because her son... Um, uh, it stole stole her car and was driving around and smoking weed in the car and picking up his friends, 15 years old. And she went to the school and she's trying to talk to them. She's so upset. She's she's she was just talking at first. Then she started yelling and she started crying um, because really she just so desperate. Like she need help. She need help. She need somebody. So the coach, she's her son is just smoking weed. He don't he don't want to do nothing no more. He don't want to do school. He don't want to do football no more so like nobody reached out to her she needs somebody please and i got so upset because i saw her go from going out going to the school talking just trying to get some help and she got herself together you know she was keeping her composure to get to a point where she was just in pain and she just started started yelling and then just crumbling and crying and all the time you know, the woman was behind the, the, the that, I want to say the um, screen, it was the glass, uh, the window there, and she was just back, was talking to the lady, and she was like telling her, once they leave out those doors, that's not really our responsibility, right? That's the police, okay? And mom was like, I understand that. And I got so upset because I understand uh, why that is that you know it, the school's not liable once they leave i understand that but the only other alternative for her son and when you say her son we talking about ours too okay is the police she trying to do she trying to get them together she feel herself losing her son okay and she, everybody has gone away she he's falling 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 deeper and she can't get nobody support. And whatever he's doing out there, they're like, that's the police. We can't have our kids going to the police. We can't have that. This just made me so upset because why did they let her be out there yelling until she just... And I felt so much pain. I felt so much pain coming from that mom. Why did they let her go out there yelling, be out there yelling and this stuff... Until she was crying. Why didn't somebody just... Why didn't she say, hold on, mom. Let me see if I can get somebody to come talk to you. Why didn't somebody in the work of the school come and just be like, come here, let me talk to you. And, and bring them to a room so she can... She just want to be heard. She she want to be heard. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like when you're a mom and you want your child to be on the right track. And you feel like nobody's listening and you are desperate and by the time you get to the point where you yelling everybody really backing off because the only thing they're focused on is the fact that you're yelling right i've been that mom okay <laughs> i've been that mom and it and it hurts bad it hurts bad because you you want what's best you know you know what's best for your child nobody's listening you want better and it seems like the outside world is either not supporting you or they're against you and all it took for her son to, for, for somebody just be like, come on in here. 
Let me talk to you. And take her out of the hallway. Because now it's like somebody's recording it. You know what I mean? It's on social media. They could with their phone. It's like everybody's watching it. It's a show. But no, this is this is a painful experience that this mom is going through. And her son is standing there too. Feeling his mom's pain. He probably heard her at home hollering at him. He probably heard her at home. Uh, or she taking, trying to take things away and all this other stuff. And slamming stuff. She, he probably heard that and was tuning it out. But seeing his mom just break down in public like that. And nobody reach out. That had to affect him too. But what's so wrong with taking them to another room. And having them sit down and listen to mom and, and talk to the son. Like, what do you think about what mom is saying? What's going on? Why did you take mom's car? You understand? Get him to, to take responsibility and say what's going on with him. That's a that's a moment right there where they both could have been hurt and they both could have grown. And he could have taken responsibility for what he's been doing. And, and it could have been a real eye opener. But instead, they just did this, right? And let her just crumble down to when I say crumble I mean she was crying and she just rested her head on her arms you know on the, the little shelf and just exposed and every and, and nothing come on man I hope after that video after they finished recording somebody came and took care of them okay I hope so because you know sometimes you see something and, and you don't see the whole story but I hope that's what's what happened but they should it should have happened earlier and moms need our support we live in a day and age now where we make too many excuses for kids. We have low expectations for kids. And we don't we don't uh, challenge kids enough. We don't make them take responsibility for their actions. Um, and then when they are out of control, we just think, get them tested. Get them tested. And they need medication. They get the diagnosis and they get medicated. I'm not saying for all, for, for some, sometimes, every once in a while. Hey, Victoria, every once in a while, Victoria, uh, somebody says to me, uh, well, my son um, um, had an IEP and it helped him. He's doing great, right? When I say that IEP shouldn't be uh, there for, for your kid's entire career, that should be temporary. And your child should grow enough so that they don't need the assistance and accommodations anymore now they're reading and functional at or above grade level they can function independently and they doing their thing in the classroom that's the goal so that's what i say and then the mom is like well my son need need an ip for all his life but it helped him he's doing good you know it, you know when people are saying things that if if this is not if they don't apply let it fly okay <laughs> if they don't apply let it fly but I'm seeing, especially since I speak to moms all the time when, my, when I do my consultations and with my experience of working as a mental health specialist, a special education teacher, I see too many situations where kids are diagnosed and put on medication or given an IEP or put in special education and then they don't grow. They don't, they're, they're sixth grade and they're still reading on a first grade level. And they're acting out so much for two reasons. One, they have uh, been able to get away with this behavior for so long. And two, they never learned how to read and function. So when it's time for them to do their work, when it's time for them to take a test, they are acting up to get out of doing it. These things are happening. And it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And I'm totally against it. And that's why I do what I do. So when I see a situation like this, um, where mom has a big boy now, he's 15, and he has no interest in school anymore. He has no interest in sports. He just wants to smoke weed, and he's falling into the wrong crowd. What could have done to su been done to support mom a long time ago when it's, this first started happening and she needed help? Most of the time, what we do is we, we provide too much help and too many excuses and too many services uh, too many accommodations for our children and we blame moms and we, we we're quick to say bad mother this is bad parenting this is bad parenting all the time we're quick to do that but really support 
uh, uh, us supporting our moms is going. If mom is all right, the child is all right. That's why in my coaching and in, in my teaching, mom is a priority, honey. Mom said, if mom is happy, then everything is good. And I teach my students to respect their moms. And I teach my students to, do, they cannot use mom as a, <laughs> as a scapegoat or blame mom for things that their responsibility. When you come to my class, you come prepared. And they come to my class and I'm, you don't, I don't have a pencil when it's time to write because you're going to write. Why don't you have a pencil? Because my mom did get, whoa, whoa. whoa. This is your responsibility. Arrive on time and prepare for success. That's the first success rule for the Morgan Unlimited Growth Institute. I didn't say make sure your mom give you a pencil. Arrive on time and prepare for success. When we, when we teach our children two things. One, to become responsible and accept responsibility for their own actions and their own things, right? And two, to respect their mothers. Then our children start to grow. Our children start to do better because even though moms are the way our kids look at us, we are the ones who are there. We take care of them. We brought them into this world, right? And we uh, nursed them, fed them, cooked for them, made sure they were clean, uh, taking care of, you know, uh, make sure their clothes are ironed, make sure they have everything they need. So they look at us like this. We are the ones that are supposed to take care of them. They also think that we are the ones supposed to take responsibility for everything that's theirs. And now we live in a society that's allowing that to happen. We need to stop. We need to stop blaming mom. We need to stop telling mom that she needs to do more because in a lot of cases, I'm not saying all moms are perfect, but in a lot of cases, y'all, when I speak to moms, they are doing everything they can and still feeling guilty and still feeling like they're not doing enough and the kids are not doing what they're supposed to do. They're not growing because they are not taking responsibility for their own stuff or doing the work that they're supposed to be doing, right? So, and plenty of times in my life, people have, have uh, told me, I mean, you should do this and do this and do this and do this. And the more that my daughter heard that, the more she sat back and tried to get people to keep doing that. After a while, I was just like, I'm doing enough. <laughs> I'm doing enough, Right? Right? And when um, I decided to stop listening to people, I'm talking as a mom right now. When I decided to stop listening to people and um, and have high expectations for my child, which I always had, but I would listen to people and feel bad and let people make me feel feel guilty, right? And I told everybody to kick rocks. And I decided to just be a mother, the mother that I felt like I should be. Take better care of myself and put more expectations on my daughter. And my husband um, did the same. We both did that. That's the only way she started to grow. So I'm telling you, y'all, when y'all out here, if anybody see that video and they're looking at the mom and they're judging the mom and they're saying, which what usually happens, maybe he's acting up like that because he's not getting enough attention at home. Maybe he's acting. See how she yell? Maybe she yell at home. That's why he act up like that. Uh, see how she acting big that's why and if you if you are trying to do that you start doing that like stop for a second and think and really hear what she is saying and the desperation that's coming from her and the pain that's coming from her because i felt that jump i felt that like very strongly uh and and think about what that what does her son need to grow Let's stop thinking about what we what we need to give children all the time and to help them with all the time. As long as we keep doing that, they stay in the same spot and they, they stay thinking that people are supposed to give them and help them. In order for me to be successful, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. In order for me to take this test and pass it, I need you to read every question for me. In order for me to do my homework, I need a one-on-one. -on -one. In school, because I get mom to be a one-on-one -on -one at home with me. Oh, you want me to write? In order for, for me to write, then you're going to have to tell me what to write. You're going to have to tell me how to spell everything. And then you may even have to write it for me. Our special education class. And me and the A's didn't get along very well because for my students who couldn't write, the A's were trying to sit next to them and just and they just asked them, what do you want to write? And they were telling them, and they started writing it down. I'm like, no, 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 uh-uh. 
no, don't write it for him. And I told him, I said, write it the best way you can. And then when you finish, you get to read it, which was a struggle at first. But after a while, they could read their own writings. That's what, that's growth. That's what's supposed to happen, right? And and I'll help you edit it, right? And the A's were just really upset with me because they thought that they would be stagnant. Let's get out of that. Let's get out of thinking that if we let our children struggle a little bit, and figure it out on their own that we are hurting them. We're actually giving them exactly what they need to get to the next level. Unless we want them to stay in the same spot, needing everybody. We need to take off the training wheels, okay? Now, in the case of this mom, somebody needs to, uh, of course, support. I don't know the whole story, which I like to get the whole story. But while that's happening... Somebody needs to talk to the son and and figure out why he's stuck and then uh, raise the expectations. Help him think bigger. Help him think about being a success. Help him figure out how to create that success and then expect him to do it. That's what we need to do. All right? We need to stop this mess, y'all. I was so upset. Like, I... By the time I got here, I had gotten it together. But y'all, y'all should have seen me. <laughs> y'all should have seen me in the living room just now. Y'all should have seen me in the living room, okay? So this this mom's pain, I feel that pain. You know how we are in our community, right? Like, uh, if one of ours is hurting, every, everybody's hurting, okay? And I felt that from a mom's perspective, okay? And I felt alone um, as a mom, you know what I mean? And I felt judged as a mom. Right, but I always knew my daughter was uh very intelligent since she was born. She was doing everything like she could read, write, and spell and do math before she even went to preschool. I turned my dining room into her little her little school, and I work with her every day. But she was just really smart. She's very smart. She reads constantly. Okay very smart when you have a child that's that smart and she's getting mixed messages and and low expectations uh from the outside world and that means that nobody believes in your child like you do that means nobody expects uh more from her like you do and if that's happening y'all then y'all need to get with other moms who have higher expectations all right Y'all need to get with other moms. Y'all need to get a mom with a mom like me that'd be like, uh-uh, no excuses. That's that's not what champions do. Let's go. Let's do it. Because I tell you, with each one of my students, I look at them like that. Definitely the youngest one who's five, the oldest one who's in the eighth grade, I look at them like that. No excuses. I have some students who've been in been in special education since since they were really, really young. And now it's time to, to read and function on grade level and function independently. So you won't need uh, special education anymore. Now it's time to change. Now it's time to go to the next level. Because I see I see that. And, and the heartbreaking thing is, like I said before, the outside world doesn't always see it. And I've been in, and it's nothing against schools. Because schools, um, uh, comment, comment below. Let me know um, how y'all feel about this. Schools, I was a teacher, and being a teacher is like the hardest dog on job next to being a mom, okay? <laughs> being a teacher, <laughs> okay? Because you got a whole bunch of kids with different personalities, different needs, and, and on any given day, you go in there and, and they think they're going to try to run the class, and you got to, you know what I mean? Luckily, I had a background in behavior modification, right? Oh, nice. Thanks, nice email there. Um, and behavior modification. So I did both in the classroom. But most teachers don't have that um, um, experience in the classroom where they can teach behavior and teach academically at the same time. And 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 a, a, a kids acting out in the class can really mess up your um, um, teaching. So I have a lot of respect for for teachers and for schools. But sometimes I run into uh, a teacher or or an administrator. That I'm like, this is the, this is a problem, and one of them I'm talking to and um, talking about my student, and she says that she thinks that cognitively he's just uh, he can't do better. She said um, he just she he doesn't she doesn't think he understands the difference between right and wrong. He can't control himself. This is what she's thinking. 
Now I spend time with mom, I spend time with him. And I know that that's not true. I know that he's used to these behaviors and using it to get attention or get out of doing work. And that's what he put that joke on repeat. And so he's still doing it, right? But this is what will happen. So, so uh, the outside world, when you're a mom and you, you, this mom that I'm talking about uh, is a dynamite mom and taught her some right from wrong. But she, the, 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 the values that she's teaching her son, that he know better in the house, is not what he gets when he goes on the outside world. So she's fighting the outside world. She's not getting, or she wasn't until now, the, the support with somebody else thinks like she does, expects what, the same thing that she does from her child, and won't let him use any excuses. And this is, this is for a lot of moms. So I implore y'all, like, if you're a mom and you see another mom struggling before you start judging, um, check in with mom and, and, and really understand, really see, talk to her and really see what's going on. Because I call those part-time opinions. People do that. People do that in real life up close. People do that in social media. You know what I mean? People always commenting on who's a bad parent, who's a not, not a bad parent, right? But get to know the whole situation. But in the end, um... Uh, a child needs to um, take responsibility for their own actions. A, a child needs to learn how to do that. A child needs to learn how to show up and be a champion. A child needs to respect their mom. Is a child following directions and respecting their mom at home is more likely to do so in the classroom. Um, but if a child is at home giving their mom a hard time and not listening, right, um, then they may be doing the same thing in the classroom, right? So, so mom needs support. Mom doesn't need judgment. Mom doesn't need for people to stand back and watch her fall apart like people did in that video. And just watch and record that junk. And, and, and not listen to her and help her. That's not what moms need. Moms need somebody. You could easily. And I asked my husband about it. And he was like, I understand what you're saying. But it's not set up like that. I don't care. I, I know it's not set up like that. <laughs> He, he's been telling me for years, like, Sharita, they, they're not, everybody not going to think the way you think. Everybody not going to do, do things the way you think they should do them. Everybody, I understand, baby, I understand. But I'm like, nobody could have walked up and be like, mom, uh, come here, mom. Let's, um, let me, let me get you somebody to talk to, or let's go to another room. I hear you. Come on, let's go to another room. Get you, get you a chair so you can sit down. You want some water? Something! Come on, man. Just gonna leave her hanging like that. And then her son is there. Oh, I felt him. I felt his pain too. He's quiet, but I feel his pain. Kids that act up and act up because they can get away with it and they're running away from their own things that they're anxious about. And when I say anxious about, like uh, failing, um, uh, having to read aloud, um, a test coming up. You understand what I'm saying? All that stuff. Um, They'll act up and they'll do all this stuff to run away from. But when they, when they see their mom break down like that, that really, they feel bad. You know how many kids I spoke to over the years drive their moms crazy but then feel really guilty about it? That's that behavior cycle I be talking to y'all about. So it's something the kids, the kids get wrapped up in that we need to interrupt uh, so that they can change. They can't pull themselves out, y'all. We need to help them. We need to help them. We need to put the structure in place and we need to help them, right? So he, so he needed that too. That's what we need. So don't judge moms. Don't sit back and record moms. Don't leave moms hanging. And I want y'all to look at all kids y'all see. I don't care how much they acting up. Like they are champions. And they, and they could do better than that. And expect them to do that. Every child. If a child is uh, more quiet, but they don't really believe in themselves. And they're unfocused, Right? Uh, that child or a child that is more uh, out with it and yelling and he'll get to yelling and cursing and throwing stuff and you need to yoke his little behind up and, and get him in check but still talk to him like he's a champion. We have to. These are our kids. These are our kids here. These are, yes, I see uh, changing. Hey, what's up, D? 
Oh, you talking about my champion right there. You see a change since he's been in my tutoring. Yes, I love him. He is so awesome. My 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 champion, my Orlando. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh he's a champion. And and that's what I was talking about. Moms, moms in my program, we included are excellent, excellent moms who work hard for their kids and teach their kids uh better. You have high standards for your kids, right? Right? So that's what we need. We need moms. We need support. Support moms all day, every day, because moms out here working hard uh, and want the best for their kids, no matter what it looks like. All right? You might catch us because we're not perfect moms. We're not politically correct moms, but we're moms who will do anything for our children. You may catch us yelling and screaming at our kids, right? <laughs> you may catch us doing that, right? But you don't know what happened to lead up to that. You know what I'm saying? You don't know how how desperate we feel in a moment for our kids to be on the right track. You don't know what happens after that. When our kids come to us be like, Mom, you were right. I'm sorry about that. You know, and I'll do better. A lot of people don't. You get the snapshot and then you make judgments. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I, I started doing what I was doing because um, I am... Um, I have a background as a mental health specialist and special education teacher, but I'm a mom, y'all. I'm a mom. And my students, I feel passionately about all my students, so they must succeed, and they must do better. And they're all champions, even if they don't know it yet, okay? But I know how moms feel when you when you want more for your child, and you, <laughs> you know how many times I've been up to the school, <laughs> And the teacher is telling me that Jazzy don't know something when I know she does because she learned it a couple years ago with me, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she didn't feel like doing it in class. So she pretended like she didn't know. And they were saying she doesn't understand the concept. She's having difficulty grasping the concepts. You understand what I'm saying? So, so listen to moms, right? Like I told you, I didn't have this written down. I just got upset and I was emotional. And I tried to write it down, write points, but I couldn't do it. I just had to get on here and talk to y'all and just connect with y'all and just let you know from the heart that I was really hurt when I saw that woman uh, crying for help, you know, for her son and everything that she's going through. And and they just left her, let her break down like that. Nobody had her back and stuff. And I've been there. I've been at, I've been in a school of the school meeting and I'm sitting there and the, and then all the staff the school staff is there and everybody talking to me looking at me and I'm sitting there and feeling upset feeling uncomfortable and knowing what's what's best for my child and knowing that she could do better but everybody at the table do, they just didn't think so you understand and they they wouldn't expect more from her and they were saying all these all these things about her maybe she needs this and maybe she needs that but I just knew better you understand but just being that person over and over again sitting in that chair that hot seat y'all that hot seat and it wasn't until she got to middle school when they started listening but when Jazzy was younger everybody thought I didn't know what I was talking about and sometimes I would be in there yelling Honestly, you know, so I had to do that. I had to work on that so that I could be heard and I figured out exactly how to communicate. That's probably why middle school they started listening. I figured out exactly how to communicate with the school so that we're on the same page and they understand exactly what's going on, you know. But I've been there. I've been there. So just, yeah, I always say mom is number one. Um, and I'm so serious about that because if mom's all right and mom's happy, then the kids are all right. So I work with my students. I work very hard with my students. You know what I mean? I, I spend most time with them. But the priority in my tutoring and coaching program is moms. Moms are the priority. All right. So I work for the moms. I work for them to be happy. Right. Right. D, I I work for your happiness. Right. And and. I want to make sure that she's happy with everything and she sees the growth in her child. And she sees sees a transformation. And I won't stop until I get that. Because I know how it feels to be in that situation where you do I wish I had me all those years ago. I wish I, I could have hired myself, you know. But I didn't have anybody like that. So, uh, 
and that's why I'm hard on my students. <laughs> that's why I'm hard on my students. That's why I expect a lot from them, and that's why I don't let them get up, give up. I don't spill nothing for them. I don't. I take the training wheels, wheels right off as soon as they come. <laughs> okay, that's why I do that. Okay, all right. So I just want to thank y'all so much for listening. Woo! If I had got on here two minutes earlier, y'all to see me. I was crying and everything. I had to get get myself together, y'all. I had to get myself together, right? And it's not. It's nothing like my passion for connecting with y'all and talking to y'all. Moms, I love moms. I love moms, right? Um, it, it has nothing to do with that and feeling vulnerable around you. It's just a Leo thing, y'all. I'm a Leo, so <laughs> Leo. <laughs> We're very emotional people. We do it in quiet, though. We get it. We we, we do that junk in quiet and in, in private. And then we come up here like, I'm good. What's up? <laughs> D, ha- D said it has brought me some so much peace since we joined you. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you and Orlando. Like I'm, I look forward to seeing y'all all the time. And um, and it was so wonderful when he did a presentation with the ferrets. And we learned all about Lydia and Leo. He's so awesome. He's such a smart kid. Uh, I knew it the first first day that I met him. He's such a smart kid. All right? And I'm going to make him work. <laughs> we don't work till we get it right. <laughs> so, like I said, if you happy, I'm happy. All right? You need anything, you let me know. All right? So I thank you so much. Thank y'all so much for listening. Thank you so much for listening. So I can just vent. I know sometimes I make no sense. <laughs> God, it was, I was just upset, y'all. So it was just coming out. It was just coming out. So I know it sometimes I probably was all over the place. But thank you so much for being here with me and listening while I got this out. And, and I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that you just look at the whole situation with moms and our kids differently and instead of blaming moms and saying that it must be something wrong with the child and the child probably needs to be diagnosed or medicated i hope that y'all start uh looking at the situation really and hearing mom listen let her talk listen to her and and look at that kid like hey what your mama say okay <laughs> come on now that's not what champions do do your best do your best and don't give them no excuses because I've met uh, quite a few champions in my life. The kids, I had the pleasure of working with kids since I was in college, y'all. I'm old now, 41 years old. Don't tell everybody. But I'm old now, right? But I've been working with kids my whole life and I'm oldest of seven children. So kids are my heart, you understand? And, and I just imagine how many other champions are out there who don't know it yet and how many other kids are struggling to read can't read like like a kid that i met today she couldn't read and she just said sorry i can't read i can't read anything and i can't spell anything i was testing her during consultation she said i want to read and that just broke my heart right there because she should be able to read you understand she wants to read she says she opened a book she looked at the pictures but she can't read it and she wants to okay so there's so many more kids out there, so many more champions walking around and don't know it. So have mom's back, y'all. Because you have mom's back, she, you can help make sure that she's strong and she okay. And if mom is strong and she okay, then the kid's going to be okay. And that's how we do it here at the Morgan Unlimited Growth Institute. All right? All right, y'all. For more information on my tutoring coaching program, go to growthinstitute.mykajabi.com. I'm booked all next week, but there's some more um, openings. Um, in two weeks and after that for free, free consultations okay all right and you can also send me a direct message um as well um for us to chat all right and so i thank y'all again for chilling with me okay i'm going to get ready for my next consultation no 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 i'm teaching i'm teaching i love teaching i'll make them work today i'll make them work y'all <laughs> i'm gonna make them work today happy saturday it's on and popping we gonna get it so I'm going to make them work today. I'm teaching in a little bit uh, my first class of the day, and I'm excited, all right? Um, and I want y'all to remember this. Believe in yourself. Believe in your child, honey, always. And always remember that growth is unlimited. Peace. Bye, Orlando! <laughs> my champ. <laughs> Tell them I can't wait to see you on Thursday.